Trading tennis on Betfair is all in the numbers, but what numbers should we be looking at specifically? And are there any key in-play stats that can help us spot the very best opportunities? In this video, I'll be showing you the number one in-play stat to look at when trading tennis that will help you spot those low-risk, high-reward trading opportunities. So go grab a nice cold beer or some strawberries and cream and let's get into it. Like most other sports these days, there are a lot of statistics and data available for tennis, but as tennis traders, what are the key ones to focus on since it can get easy to get lost in the numbers? And most importantly, which stats will help us to spot the potential price swings that we can profit from similar to the chart on this screen here? After all, when we're trading tennis, we actually don't really care about who's gonna win. We just wanna be on the right side of these many, many price swings that will happen during a tennis match. So which stats should we be focusing on? So I'm just on Flash Scores, which is a free website. And if you are gonna be trading tennis in any sort of way, then you definitely wanna be using this tool. Like I said, it's absolutely free, but the scores update on Flash Scores very, very quickly. And sometimes I see the score update on Flash Scores before I see it update on the live stream. So like we said, tennis is all in the numbers and you could trade tennis just using flash scores instead of using the live stream. It really is that fast. However, if you can find a, a free live stream in Betfair or Bet365, Bet then definitely try and use both whenever possible. But anyway, here's a match that was on late last night. Uh, Andreescu against Cerebes Tomo. Looks like it was a tight match, 2-1 and all that sort of thing, okay? so. Which stats should we be looking at? If we click on statistics, I mean, there's a lot of stats to look at, right? So your mind is probably uh, boggled already. And especially if you don't know much about tennis, you're probably thinking, well, which ones are the important ones, okay? Now, the great thing with flash scores is we can divide this the stats up into set one, set two, and set three, okay? So obviously, if we're trading the match, then we can only probably look at set one before we can kind of decide on what, what action we're maybe going to take in set two or set three, okay? So what would we be looking at? Aces, double faults, the first serve percentage, the first serve points one, second serve points one, and so on and so on, okay? Games, no, none of that, none of that. There's only one stat which you should really, really be concentrating on, and it is this stat, break points converted, okay? Break points converted. Now, if you, go back a little bit earlier in the video, I showed you the chart with all the price swings. Well, what causes those price swings? It's break points being converted. Okay. So if we look at the match overall, we can see this was definitely a good one for trading. Okay. Break points converted nine for Andreescu and eight for uh, her opponent. Okay. So that's a very fun match to trade. And there were 18 opportunities, okay? And then 17 for her opponent as well. So lots and lots of swings in that one. I don't actually have the chart to hand, which would have been good for the video, but I'm sure you get the, uh, you get, you get the idea. So obviously this is, now the match is finished, break points converted, we can see there was a lot. However, in play, how would we know? So if we're trading, say at the end of the first set, we can take a look and we can just see that, well, in that first set, Andreescu converted three break points and her opponent converted two. So that was a pretty tight match uh, with, with three against two and uh, rather than it being some sort of walkover. So from that point on, you could kind of decide, well, if it was a tight first set, maybe it's going to be a tight second set. If Andreescu was broken or had her serve broken in that first set, which she did twice, well, there's a good chance it's going to get broken again, right, in, in, the, in the second set. So from that point, let's see what happened in the second set regarding break points converted. And, well, it got even more wild, okay? In the, in the second set, break points converted, uh, three for Andreescu and then five for her opponent, who was the underdog, okay? Let me just go back. If we can scroll down, we can see that she was the bet 365 underdog at uh, 3.2. So... If she just lost the first set, then that price is going to be significantly higher. And therein lies the opportunity, okay? And how do we spot that opportunity? Just by looking at what happened in set one, okay? We could see that she's managed to convert two break points in set one. So 
kind of a good chance he's going to convert at least one break point in set two. And considering how, how low the price on Andreescu is, it's very low risk and high reward, okay? And so if we were, say, say we just wanted to get involved in set three, the final set, when it's 1-1, one, one, well, we can see the break points converted. We can see that, look, <laughs> three in, in set two and then another three there and then two here and then five. So seven altogether. So uh, a, a, a match probably full of, full of wild swings already. And then you head into the third set and then there were more break points converted, okay? And when you compare that to a typical men's match, which is usually maybe just one break point converted per set, you can definitely see how there is going to be a lot more opportunity in the women's in the women's matches. And just by looking at this stat, the break points converted can give us a very good idea of what is going to happen in the next set. OK, and this is what I've definitely found from my own experience in tennis trading. If there were lots of break points converted in the first set, probably going to happen again in the second set. And so that is a very, very big indication of uh, potential future price swings okay that's what we want when we're trading tennis we actually want the volatility and just to give you a bit of contrast to this this is a men's match okay Medvedev who you can see here the ranking world number two against Bautista uh, number 12 rank okay but if we just scroll down just to look at the starting prices you can see Medvedev was a strong odds on favorite okay on uh, according to the, the bet365 starting prices so he'd be a similar price on betfair now he actually lost okay so the underdog went and won now if you were trading this match then it could be a tempting strategy to lay the underdog if they win the first set however let's see how that first set developed regarding break points converted and of course in men's tennis break points are a lot more of a rare event but if you look at that break points converted zero for, for Medvedev in that first set and then Bautista got uh, one uh, and converted well converted one out of two so just based on that you couldn't really argue for for any reason for Medvedev to kind of get back into it in the second set and then um if we just look at the second set how it went in the second set and uh where are we and then you could see he didn't convert any break points in the second set either and the underdog converted too okay and uh just just to show you as well you can get a more a bit more of a visual here by just looking for the lost serve statistic or the lost serve highlight when if you click on point by point okay so you can see that medvedev lost his serve there at pretty crucial time in the set and then it was pretty much a foregone conclusion with the underdog but just looking at that key in place stat there was no real reason for you to feel like you wanted to back medvedev heading into the the second set if you did you were probably just hoping or maybe you were watching it live and had a really good read on the match but it kind of shows you how you can use that in play stat to not only find opportunities but also to help you avoid and dodge bullets okay because that would have been a, a definite match where a lot of people would have been backing him the world number two to get back into the match in the second set but he was comprehensively beaten however like we said the in play statistic was kind of showing us and giving us an indication of what was to come in that second set. And so you might be wondering how to profit from this. Well, I'm actually going to dive right into some real life demonstrations to show you exactly how you can take advantage of this. But the main idea is that you want to look for players that have probably won the first set so that their price is going to be pretty low in the markets. It could easily be below 1.2, maybe below 1.1, but it's a pretty low price and we want to look for the break points converted to get an idea of whether that underdog could get back into it. Because if they've converted some break points in set one, good chance they're going to convert some break points in, in set two. And then we can uh, achieve the price swings that we're looking for. So that's one way of, of taking advantage of it is just to look for those really low risk, high reward situations okay especially if you are a beginner but anyway i'm going to dive into some real life demonstrations so you can see exactly what i mean these were all recorded on the betfair interface but before i do that if you haven't done so already please click the like button to support the channel these videos do take a lot of time and effort and a lot of research goes into it to give it to you for free so just click the like button to show your support that's all you have to do and it helps us know which videos you like so we can do more of them in the future Okay, let's dive in and let me show you how you can take advantage of using that number one in-place stat to find low risk, high reward 
tennis trading opportunities. Interesting match here. Ashley Barty, the world number one, playing against a player ranked around 149. She's winning the first set. It's now in the second set, and she's having a bit of a uh, tough second set. I mean, it's 4-4. And as you would expect, though, Ashley Barty's price, very, very low there at 1.08. But the key kind of statistic we want to look at is this one, the break points converted. Now, Kukova, at some point, has converted two break points. Okay, so she's shown potential to convert a break, a break point when Ashley Barty is serving. So, if you look at the price available on, on Ashley Barty, it's pretty low. And uh, that's pretty low risk. And a price that we wouldn't mind laying, especially considering we know that she's already broken her once before. If she does it again, she might well go on to win the second set, which would cause a nice drift in the odds, okay? So anyway, she's currently serving Kukova, so we would just wait and see if she wins her service game, and then we would lay Ashley Barty heading into her service game. Let's see what happens. So Kukova did win that service game. So we're going to enter the market now. We're going to lay uh, Ashley Barty here for a uh, £500 stake, which is only a £60 risk in the market okay very low odds so we can risk low to potentially win big and as mentioned we've seen that Kuchova has broken Barty before and just to even show you on the chart looks like there was a break point converted early on in the match but Barty's largely been in in full control ever since however um, it looks like this match is probably going to be a little bit closer than the market suggests and what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and uh, catch the swing in the odds if uh, Kuchova can put some pressure on uh, Barty's serve, okay? So, I guess they're just sitting down. They're, Barty's going to come out and serve. Let's see what happens. And so you can see we're halfway right at least because currently now Kuchova has a set point on Barty's serve, okay? So you can see the odds have gone up a bit and you could take some profit out we could take out 20 pounds of profit from this and or we could have maybe created a free bet but um and then you can see there's a double fault there so it kind of shows you the opportunities that are there and obviously it de really depends on what sort of profit you are looking for whether you want to hang in there for the break or you want to just take a little bit of profit out when there is the uh, pressure on the serve but if you look at that we got the break and so the odds have shot up on, on Ashley Barty. They were 1.12. Now they've shot up to 1.30 uh, at the moment, okay? Because the underdog has surprisingly taken the second set. But like I said, it wasn't that surprising because we'd seen that she had uh, converted break points on Barty's serve twice before in the match. And, well decent chance is going to happen again so anyway what i'm going to do is i'm just going to close this trade out because obviously barty is still such a strong favorite and so what i'd rather do is just create a free bet leave all the green sitting on barty okay so we're just going to back barty there at 1.29 give ourselves an 85 pound free bet on her and we've, we've got the third set to play out and uh, i'm pretty confident she's going to get a hold of the match and and win it comfortably from here but that was a, a pretty decent opportunity, okay? And that was all highlighted or, or found, spotted, just by looking at those in-play statistics. And like I said, the most important in-play statistic of all. So I've got another really good example for you in just a moment. But while you're here, please do leave a comment and let us know if this video has helped you learn anything in any way. And also, if there are any other subjects you want us to cover on the channel, then letting us know in the comments is the best way for us to consider it to be done in the future, okay? Just leave a quick comment and we check all the comments and try to reply to as many as we can within the first 24 hours of release. But anyway, let's check out another, another example of this and there were lots of lessons to be learned in this one as you will see right now. So we've got this match here, Mertens against Naomi Osaka, okay? Now Naomi Osaka's won the first set and she's into 1.15, so very short price and she won the first set 6-3 and so it looks pretty comfortable i mean she was a short price favorite beforehand she's won the first set 6-3 so it probably makes sense for her price to be this short but if we just scroll down and just take a look at the break points converted and you will see that 
the underdog, Mertens, has managed to get a break point. She's managed to break Osaka's serve at some point, okay? So Osaka's broken twice, she's broken once. So it's a tiny bit closer than maybe the odds are suggesting, okay? So should Osaka be 1.15? And the big, the big question we've got to ask ourselves is if we lay her here at 1.16, where is this price going to go next? Is it going to go down to 1.01 or do we feel that we can get it up to maybe 1.32 or something like that? Okay, so that's exactly what we can do. And just to show you what we're going to do, we're going to lay Osaka at 1.16. Okay, and then we're going to look to gain 16 ticks. And then we're just going to leave it in the market and whichever happens first uh, is, is going to be our end result. So either she goes down to 1.01 and we lose £80, but if she makes it up to 1.32, we should then have an £80 free bet sitting on this really strong favourite. Okay, So it's a 50-50 chance, 50-50 uh, risk reward that we're giving ourselves. Anyway, let's see what happens. The second set is just about to begin and that's what we're going for. And so you can see what's happened here. I mean, it's been a pretty tight start to the second set. However, Osaka has scored the first break point and now her price has dropped in really short to 1.07. So just to show you, I mean, if we wanted to, we could give up on this um, and just take a £42 loss. However, we're sticking to the rules. Remember, we went in and we said, look, which one's going to hit first? Is it going to go to 1.01 first or go to 1.32? And I, and I show you that it was actually one tick away <laughs> from getting up to the 1.32 <laughs> but we missed that bit but anyway we're, we're gonna we're gonna stick with it we've we've got our plan let's stick with it but for those who are interested you can get out for a, for a, a smaller loss there if you did wish and just to show you that at least Mertens broke straight back so Osaka's price has gone back up to 1.14 and now we're we're, we're we're back in business we're trying to hit that 1.32 target point okay and like we observed, we, we know that uh, Mertens had broken Osaka's serve earlier on. And so, yep, there's a pretty good chance that she will have the, the know-how to do it again. Okay, so these prices are pretty short and uh, they can be taken advantage of. So anyway, we're, we're kind of back to square one. But for those who are new to tennis trading, it just kind of shows you the ins and outs of it and why it's not always advised just to kind of give up on trades early on. And we just got matched there at the 1.32, uh, okay? So that is interesting. And we didn't even need uh, Mertens to take the lead in this second set for us to get matched at 1.32. That was just a bit of volatility. And, you know, as, as, we, as we speak, it actually looks like Mertens is getting a bit of medical attention. And that is why the Sarkis price is now shortening as the markets usually overreact to these okay so uh, anyone who's new to tennis trading is getting um is, is learning a lot of lessons in this little clip here so anyway as you saw what happened we entered this trade at the start of the second set we knew that mertens has what it takes to break osaka's serve and we fancy there's a good chance that her price is going to rise in the second set we put in that order at 1.32 osaka's price did go she did score the first break of serve and it went dramatically down to 1.07. Many would have given up at that point, but remember, we had our plan, and so we stuck to it. Mertens has broken back into it and got it up to 1.32, and now we have our 80 pounds sitting on Naomi Osaka that we were looking for. So it was either we were gonna uh, lose 80 or potentially win 80, okay? now But now we've got 80 pounds to play with, depending how the rest of this match plays out. So, uh, interesting trade there for you, okay? Laid a soccer at 1.16, then out at 31.32, 16 tick gain, and we are pretty much done with, with this example, okay? But the main uh, principles to take away from this was looking at that in play stat to see if Mertens has what it takes to break a soccer serve, and also sticking to our plan, and also showing you that tennis, it can always give you a chance, all right? Tennis trading always gives you a chance to maybe get out the market and take a profit. So that is just a taster of some of the low risk, high reward opportunities available within tennis trading. And on the screen now is a bit of information about the program Ultimate Tennis Trading for those who are interested in learning how to trade tennis and uh, 
uh, benefit from some of those low risk, high reward opportunities. Okay. Now at the time of recording this video, it has been over a year since we opened this course to the public due to many reasons beyond our control, but tennis trading is back and it is booming and we are looking to open this again very, very soon now. So if you want to get more information and get on the waiting list for this, then click the link in the description of the video and submit your email address. Okay. And then you'll be the first to know once we do finally reopen. It has been a long, long while. And keep in mind that this course is designed for people who don't know anything about tennis. Okay. So if you have no clue about tennis, then this is actually the perfect course for you. Okay. So you will learn how to trade a tennis match from start to finish, even if you know nothing about tennis. Okay. When I first started to trade tennis, I knew nothing and you could argue that I still know nothing about tennis because it is all in the numbers as you've kind of learned in this video today. But you also learn how to do the pre-match research to pick out your own trades. Again, it's all in the numbers and it only takes 30 seconds. How to read a tennis match and it is all in the numbers. You could actually use flash scores to do it because flash scores has improved so much. You don't have to actually watch the live action. But uh, and of course you get five strategies all together okay three of them are low risk and there's two more advanced ones okay five strategies and there's going to be a big bonus package as well as a big thank you for those who have been patient enough i mean it has been over a year and that means there's been a whole bunch of people who have been on the waiting list for over a year for ultimate tennis trading okay and uh yeah we don't feel great about it but obviously we've all the things that have happened in the past year, it's been totally out of our control. But anyway, if you are interested in getting on the waiting list for ultimate tennis trading, the link is in the description of this video. Just scroll down, click through, put in your very best email address. And then as soon as uh, the doors will open again, you will be the first to know about it. But anyway, if you are new to the channel, you haven't done it yet. Remember to kick, click on that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. So you're one of the first to get the new videos. And if you want to keep watching, there are two really, really good videos on the screen right now for you to check out. Okay, click on one of those and then I will see you in the next video.